Matthew chapter 24 proves that this end time uh, soul winning thing where thousands are getting saved, it's a total lie, total fabrication. Matthew chapter 24, verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. All right. Um, how many people got saved in Noah's day? God's worldwide judgment is coming. How many people got saved? Um, eight. Eight people were all that was saved. Let me show you. Noah was five, or excuse me, 400 years old when he built the ark. 400 years. Turn back to 2 Peter, by the way. 2 Peter chapter 2. 400 years that Noah was on the earth, and yet he could only get seven members of his own family to come on board the ark with him. Not a very good uh, <clears throat> soul winner. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person. There you see the eight. A preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Noah is called a preacher of righteousness. Go back to Genesis chapter 6, the actual account of the flood. Show you another thing back here. Pretty amazing. Genesis chapter 6 verse 5, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Very much like today. Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 24, As in the days of Noah, so too shall be in the days before the coming of the Son of Man. What was going on in Noah's day is going to be the same way it is in the end times. And here we are. Verse 6, And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. Now, of course, you know, people, easy believers in crowd will say, well, see, repentance can't be about repenting of sin and things because that would make God a sinner. They're rather stupid. They can't read context. Okay, When this is talking about God is repenting, he's saying, I'm changing my feelings. I'm changing my attitude here. I wish I hadn't even created man. That's what it's saying there. Doesn't mean he's a sinner. Read context. Okay? Jesus Christ came to call sinners to repentance. You know, some of these people can't differentiate between a sinner and Almighty God. You know, context determines the meaning, the definition of the word repentance. Not that hard. Okay? Verse 8 But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. And yet, uh, 400 years of life there, and uh, that entire time, he could only get seven people saved. So you hear these reports of people, and they're going out and they're saying, I mean, I've, I've known this, I've been around people, you know, these Catholics especially, and they'll be like, had a soul winning crusade, we got, you know, 100 people saved this weekend. And you see these people, thousands saved under this ministry, just thousands upon thousands of people saved and everything else. And uh, it's like, okay, um, Acts chapter 2, they had 3,000 people get saved, and they literally turned the world upside down. And yet you want me to believe that here in these end times, tens of thousands of people are getting saved by ministries. Um, where's the fruit? It's not there. You see, Jesus, here's the whole issue. Jesus Christ said in the end times there, before the coming of the Son of Man, it's going to be like it was in the days of Noah. In the days of Noah, there weren't that many people getting saved, genuinely saved. Is that right? And yet the hyper soul winner comes along and says, oh, that's, oh, no, there's, there's actually, we're getting a lot of people saved. Thousands of people are getting saved. Well, then you're denying the words of Jesus Christ. It's kind of interesting. 
Um, what they're doing in reality, this soul winning stuff, um, especially the Hiles Anderson stream of Baptists out there, they are doing high pressured sales techniques on people, pressuring people into saying a prayer and then saying they got saved. What happened after you know that? I don't know. I don't care. It doesn't matter. They prayed the prayer. They're saved. They're in. Whatever happens to them after that doesn't matter to me. They're saved. I got them to pray the prayer. They're saved. They're in. Through high pressure sales tactics. It's not of the Lord. It's not at all of the Lord. So um, don't let these people badger you and belittle you and say, when's the last time you led somebody to the Lord? Uh, well, I knew a man that um, lived for 400 years and only managed to get seven people from his own family to get on the ark. And God called him in 2 Peter chapter 2 a preacher of righteousness. And here in Genesis chapter 6 verse 9, Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations and Noah walked with God. You mean somebody can be walking with God and yet not leading thousands of people to the Lord? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, do not be deceived by this modern hyper soul winning movement. It's a lie. Um, they're not getting a lot of people saved. In fact, they're probably not getting any people saved. So that's going to be it. Thank you for watching.